When you're starting a new backend development project in 2022, there are two sort of best choices that have kind of emerged over the past few years. And those are really Go and TypeScript. Those are sort of the two dominating languages right now. Go has seen a massive surge in popularity over the past few years for very good reason. I use it myself. And TypeScript is just, it's just a super set of JavaScript that makes it usable. And it is insanely popular, most popular language for any sort of web development. It's completely taken over. We build our front ends, our back ends, our CLI apps, our AI. It eats all of JavaScript at this point. So when you're looking at starting a new back end project, which one do you pick? It's a sort of nuanced question, and a lot of people will give you a very flat, just always use JavaScript because you always want your front end and back end to be in the same language, make it super easy, that sort of thing. And then you'll also get the sort of purists who will say, oh, you need to be using Rust or Go or any of these real languages because you need the speed, you need the performance, you need the concurrency, this and that and whatever. And I think that both of them serve a purpose, and I think that they can actually coexist really well. In fact, I know they can because my company uses both. So we use both Go and TypeScript for our backend. So I put together a little pros and cons list that I kind of want to go over it and give you an example of how we actually use it and what my recommendation would be for you actually implementing this into your projects. So what you see in front of you is a very basic pros and cons list that I wrote up. It's the same sort of thing you'll get in any blog post or anything like that. And it sort of just lists the differences for each. And I think that they both serve purposes and these pros and cons sort of illustrate that purpose. So when we look at Go, it's ridiculously fast. It's a very lightweight language, very easy to build and run. It is has excellent concurrency. Go routines are fantastic. Um, channels are great. Very easy to use, very easy to understand. It has great frameworks, but they're not even necessary. What's cool about it is if you don't want to use like a framework, like Fiber or something like that, you can roll your own. You can just use the built-in HTTP module and expose a server like that. It's super easy. Now, I wouldn't actually recommend doing that. Personally, I still use a framework. It's nice to have all the built-in features, authentication, middleware, that sort of stuff. Makes development a lot easier and it gives you some nice peace of mind. But if you're the sort of type who wants the smallest possible bundle, the smallest sort of performance, if you're that type of person, then you should be using Go or Rust or any of these real languages. So when we look at the issues that you're going to have with Go, the biggest ones I have is A, it's not as easy to integrate in with your front end as TypeScript is. I'll talk about that in a second, but there's a very clear disconnect between the two and you can really only communicate via REST, which, I mean, that's the traditional way of doing it. It works really well for a reason, but this is the only way you can do it and it can be kind of disconnected and also Go is not an opinionated language at all. Like, JavaScript isn't the most opinionated thing in the world. I mean, everything has 30 different truth values, and you should see some of the insane tables you can get of JavaScript truth values that I've seen. Ridiculous stuff. But, at the end of the day, it has a built-in, uh, it has more built-in methods than Go does. The Go standard library doesn't even implement sort. So there's a lot of stuff you have to just come up with it yourself and go, which on the one hand can be really good, but at the other, on the other hand, it can lead to some really bad code. And that is an issue that Go has had, where the amount of freedom they give you, the fact that concurrency has so little opinions, there are so many different ways you could do it. You can solve one problem 30 different ways. That's a really great thing because that spurs innovation, but at the same time, it also spurs foot guns. And you can do a lot of really bad stuff in there that's not ideal. So Gorm is less intuitive than Prisma. It still works just as well, but in my personal experience, I prefer Prisma, but I think that's partially just because Prisma is so intuitive and makes so much sense to work with. I found that Gorm is a lot less intuitive to use than Prisma is, but that's just me. It still works very well. It's still very well supported. It's still a great ORM. But for me personally, I prefer Prisma. Now, granted, that doesn't really matter for us because we use MongoDB in our backend, so... All of the MongoDB integrations with Go are fantastic. I feel like the MongoDB and Go work so well together. The structs and the B song and all that stuff is just fantastic. It is a great developer experience. I highly recommend giving it a try if you have a use case that warrants using MongoDB. A to-do app or a user's table or a payment processor or any of that stuff does not warrant MongoDB. But massive amounts of data that's stored document-wise, that doesn't warrant MongoDB. TypeScript is far less performant than Go. 
Go is really, really fast. It has insanely easy to use concurrency. It's super lightweight. TypeScript isn't. It's single threaded on the event loop. It's not great. You're going to have very heavy performance bottlenecks. And if you just put one CPU of Go versus one CPU of TypeScript, the Go CPU will obliterate the TypeScript one. The TypeScript one is going to need to auto scale really quickly and really soon, or else bad things are going to happen. But in 2022, that really doesn't matter because we have this wonderful thing called serverless. Serverless sort of solves TypeScript, and it's the reason why I would recommend it for most of your backend use cases. So what serverless is, if you're not familiar with it, is when you make a request to a server, it spins up an instance for that request, executes it, and then kills that instance. So instead of just buying effectively a computer in the cloud, which is what the traditional method is, you simply just buy a license for them to spin up a server when you have a request come in and then spin it down after. So TypeScript can scale infinitely on this because if you imagine you have 10 million requests come in at the exact same time, 10 million instances get spun up, they all get executed, they all spin down, no issues. But if you put 10 million into one CPU, that CPU is going to have a horrible day and it's not going to work, it's going to crash, you're going to lose revenue, all that stuff. So serverless solve TypeScript effectively and it's the reason why it's so good and if you're using Next.js as a backend, which you probably should be, I would recommend if you're going to use TypeScript for your backend, heavily link it to your front end because that's one of the benefits you get. That sort of DX of having the same language on both the front and back end, being able to share interfaces back and forth, share types, that's what TRPC provides and Next.js provides. And it's such a great developer experience. It is insane how nice it is to just be able to call a function on my front end and have it execute on the back end. And I don't have to think about it. So then another thing that's really nice is the package ecosystem. TypeScript has a much better package ecosystem than Go does. Go is growing, it's gaining stuff all the time, and it has support for most major um, SaaS companies, you know, SendGrid, that sort of thing. It's all there. But Go, but TypeScript is the standard, and more specifically, Node.js is the standard. Virtually every company uses it. So every single package that you are ever going to need is in the NPM registry. So it makes it a lot easier to get spun up and there's usually better documentation for NPM packages because for some reason this is, there's no data to prove this, it's just my experience, but I found that TypeScript and Node documentation is always really, really good. I don't know why when I'm working with like Python and Go and that kind of thing, their docs are just worse for some reason. I think that, well, Python, they're older and Go, it just doesn't have as many. There's a lot of really great ones, like the Fiber docs are great, but TypeScript has amazing docs. If you go and look at the Prisma docs or the new React docs or the new Next.js beta docs, they are fantastic. They're really easy to use and they have a great ecosystem behind them, which makes building TypeScript projects really easy, which leads me to the next thing. It is really easy to hire for. So this may not be a big thing for you if you're just starting your own project or trying to learn these things, but this sort of translates into your future because if you're thinking about a language you want to build your backend in, you're, if you're trying to start your own company, you want to think about the future to where, okay, if I actually build this out, how could I hire people to work on this? It's going to be a lot easier to find qualified TypeScript Next.js backend developers than it is to find Go developers because Go is much newer and it has a much smaller community and it has much, much lesser adoption versus TypeScript, it's so easy to hire for. And it's also, if you want to try and get a job yourself, you're, there's a much many, there are many more jobs available for TypeScript. So it's gonna be a lot easier to get a job with the backend skill set you'll gain from doing Next.js versus doing Go. Even though you could argue parts of Go can be more difficult, there's still a lot to TypeScript. And advanced TypeScript especially is really crazy. Some of the stuff the guys who make like TRPC and all that do is insane. The stuff you can do, JavaScript has a very high skill ceiling and there's a lot of really great stuff you can do with it. I don't want to call it a toy language or anything like that, even if it has its quirks you can do really good things with it. And with serverless, it makes it work. So getting into the cons of TypeScript, it's sort of what I mentioned earlier, is that it needs serverless to work effectively, or you need to be able to scale with K8s right off the rip, but don't use that at this point. At this point, it's so easy to use serverless. Just make your full stack app in Next.js and then click the deploy button on Vercel and then it just works. You don't have to think about it. No worries, it just works. Um, obviously the performance is a big issue and that lack of concurrency is really where you get hit. Because if you imagine you have to do three database calls separately and you can't do a join or something if there's just three separate collections or if you're using like a document database, you have to do three separate queries in TypeScript, that has to either be done through callback hell or through simple async await 
just normal promises. And that's going to cause a huge bottleneck because you have to wait 500 milliseconds for one, 500 milliseconds for the next, 500 milliseconds for the last one, and then you send it back to the user in about two seconds after all the processing and travel time. Versus with Go, you can do all those at the same time. You can spin up three Go routines, give each one their own database connection. They can all execute at the exact same time, and you send that request back in like 700 milliseconds, and suddenly you're doubling your speed just by using Go and getting these performance benefits from a concurrent backend, and that's the reason why we use it. So my company's site, InsiderViz, we have two separate backends. We have our Next.js backend, which is linked using TRPC to our front end, and then we have our Golang data API. So all the financial data you see on our site, all the trades, the stock data, that kind of thing, that is coming from Go, because there's massive amounts of it, and we often have to do some aggregations on it and some fixes as it comes out of the database to then send down to the user. And we also have to often call four or five different collections for one page because some of these data visualizations get pretty complex. So we have to call it from a bunch of different places. And the only way to do that efficiently is with concurrency. So we use concurrency here and get all of those performance benefits to send down our data. But we still utilize the Next.js TRPC backend for our users and our payments. So the actual we considered actually just implementing all that stuff using Go. We found it's very intuitive and very easy to use Prisma and Stripe and all that stuff. It's and next off. Those three things work really well together. So building this Next.js um, building this Next.js full stack app, full stack app made user management really easy. So our Next.js backend is mostly there to manage our users and manage our payments. So those are stored in a separate place from our data. We have two separate databases. They're stored in different places. We have the sort of what our company really does here. And then we have our sort of business logic here. And the business logic is a lot more intuitive to do in the Next.js world. It's a lot easier to do it in TypeScript with all these sort of things with the benefits of Prisma. And TRPC especially makes it really easy because it's effectively just calling functions on the front and back end. If you haven't seen it, look it up. A million videos about it, really great tutorials. Just take a look. I highly recommend attempting to adopt this. It'll make your life a lot easier. So we sort of end up with the best of both worlds. And that's kind of what I, the point I want to make is that both of these have their place. When you need to do complex, when you need heavyweight concurrency, really high performance web apps, use Go or Rust or some other real language type thing. But then when you just need to do basic stuff, if you need to read and write out of a SQL database to get users, payments, to-dos, whatever you're trying to do, just set up this Next.js, TRPC, Prisma, SQL, next auth sort of thing, and it will make your life so, so easy. It makes it really fast, and you don't have to worry about any of the headaches you used to have to worry about, and it's going to make your app really easy to scale.